Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of MIPS Crash Course, a series where we go over the MIPS instruction set architecture and we write some neat programs in order to, you know, help better understand it. So, um, in our last video, we looked at, uh, you know, very basic, kind of like a Hello World program, but in the MIPS assembly language. And we're going to expand on that by looking at how do we do, say, both input and output. That was kind of a one directional. Uh, uh, the Hello World is a one directional program. All we do is print things out to the console, but what if we want to say get an input as well? How do we handle that? And so we'll do that today. So this will give us some good practice with uh, dealing with those uh, uh, the, the different modes of execution that we can be in when we do system calls. And then uh, as well as still getting used to some of the instructions and learning some new ones. So let's go ahead and get started. So brief recap. So a text section is where our program begins. We're using the main label. We don't need a label here. It's not like C, we don't need something like main, but we're putting it here just so we've got some program structure when we're reading our code. And the first thing we're gonna do, uh, so this program is going to prompt the user for a number as an input, and then we'll go ahead and read that number. We'll print out um, some stuff, and then we'll print out the number that we read in in the first place. So how do we do this? So again, we'll put, uh, we'll use this V0. Remember V0 is used to set um, our machine into different modes. And so when we do that, uh, you know, we set it to four in order to print a string uh, to the output or in order to print a string. And so we'll load V0 with four and then we'll load A0, which is used to store arguments with prompt and prompt we have done here in the data section that says, please enter an integer as an ASCII null terminated string. So we'll, this will be an address. So LA again is load address, and then we'll do a system call. So we should print that out. Uh, I'll go ahead and hide that. So then the next thing uh, is we're gonna read this time. So instead of four, uh, which is for uh, uh, writing, uh, to, uh, writing to the console, we've set it in five in order to read an integer. So uh, again, all these modes are very specific purposes. So four isn't just printing, I should say. Four is specifically printing a string. And then five is specifically reading an integer. So right here, we're gonna prompt for an integer. We're going to set it into read mode. We're gonna do a system call. And then notice we don't need to load anything in here. Uh, so implicitly, we need to keep, keep this in mind. So when we do this in read integer mode, whatever we write in as an integer, will get filled into V0. So V0 will be overwritten. So V0 will be overwritten by whatever number we put in. And so we'll go ahead and do this move operation. And this move operation will just take whatever's in uh, V0 right here, and it will put it in S0. So it's kind of like copying. So then the next thing we have, let's we'll go ahead and print out uh, a string that says, you know, the number you entered was, or specifically you typed the number. Uh, so we'll go ahead and set it into print mode again. So with four, and then we'll go ahead and do load address uh, output this time from the data section. We'll do a syscall and that'll print out that string. And then finally, we're gonna print out the number. So again, a new mode that we're gonna put it in. So we're going to load immediate. So we'll specify that value here. So we're gonna go load one into V0 saying, I want you to get be in print mode, but not print string mode up here. I want you to be in print integer mode. And again, uh, a zero is the argument, uh, is the register we use for arguments here. And so we'll move S zero, which is where we stored or we moved our input into. So we got our input here when uh, V zero was overwritten, we moved it into S zero. That way we could use V zero again. And so here we'll move S zero that contains that input that we have. It's just laying around and we'll put that into our argument register. And so when we call syscall here, V0 says we're in print integer mode, or, uh, and then it will look at A0 and it will print that out. And then finally, again, we'll put, we'll put it in, uh, we'll set it up for termination by loading 10 into V0, and then we'll do syscall. And again, here's our data section. And so this is where we'll store, uh, we've got these two labels, prompt and output that are both ASCII null terminated strings. So let's go ahead and assemble our program. 
So up here we've got the assembly that uh, this gets moved into. And then uh, we see that it's, again, kind of like last time. It's very similar, but slightly different. So it strips out all the things like labels. Labels, in effect, don't mean anything um, to the machine. What really matters is, say, the address that that label's at. So we kind of replace labels with addresses. And then, you know, we're not, load immediate doesn't really mean anything in terms of instruction. So those get replaced with things like this add integer unsigned right here. So this just adds zero and four in order to put four into V zero, which is register two, which you can see over here. And all of these things like the register numbers are things that are defined uh, inside of the MIPS instruction set. And then down here, we've got our data segment where we stored our two uh, strings. So here we have, uh, uh, let's see. So it says, please enter an integer. And then down here, it says, um, uh, that's, where, that's where we print out that uh, you entered what number, right? Yeah. You, uh, so it says, so there's number, N-U-M-B-E-R, and then the, and then P-E-D. So let's just go read that. It's kind of hard to read backwards. You type the number, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, oh, that's what it is. So it goes off a little further to the right over here. So if we move this over and we move that over, Ah, uh, there it is. So there we go. U T Y P E D the number. There we go. So it starts up here, and so it starts at. Uh, this is the actual uh, position. The second label starts at. So the the two get, despite the fact that you know down here it seems like they're two completely different, or rather up here, despite the fact that these two labels seem like they're in completely different areas of the data segment, um, they're actually kind of compacted back to back. There's no reason we should waste space. Okay. So that's going to go ahead and do it. So we can go ahead and print or uh, start our execution. So let's clear this. We'll look at run IO and then we will start. So it says, please enter an integer. So I'll put in 10, I'll press enter. And then here we go. You type the number 10. Right, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. There we have some basic IO again. Let's look at the code and do a little recap. So what did we learn today? So again, we learned about the different modes that we put that we set the system in when we loaded to v0 and do a syscall and so we learned two new modes so one of them was five that we used to read an integer uh, as it, or get an integer as an input that overwrites v0 with that integer and then we also looked at uh, this mode one which is for printing out an integer so instead of a string that uses four we use one and then also this move instruction that we can use to uh, move registers around. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this example. If we go ahead and go up here to our GitHub page at github uh, github.com slash coffee before arch, and then we go to my profile, we've got all the series that we work on here. So this is MIPS Crash Course. We also have some parallel programming and GPU programming courses as well. So we looked at, let's see, intro. Oh, I have to push these. So let's do IO example. We'll commit this to master and we'll push it. And we'll go ahead and refresh. There we go, we've got IO now. So here's that example. So feel free to download this, play around with it on your own simulator like uh, Mars that I'm using or uh, SPIM, which is another one. And let me know if you have any questions. My contact information is here, as well as links to the other videos in the series. Or if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover, um, I'm open to those suggestions as well. So again, my name's Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.